sorry. Uh, I slightly changed a bit the, uh, the title, just because I saw the, the other presentations and uh, uh, maybe this can uh, help us uh, when uh, we also talk about a topic that uh, in fact that in fact is, thank you, uh, more, uh, we have more uh, research and more knowledge about uh, not the underground structures, but uh, the, uh, the other ones. So in fact, um, what I would like to talk with is why we should discuss the, the problem of seismic when uh, we talk about uh, uh, heritage and underground heritage. In fact, we have the record of uh, victims all around the world, and we have also economic loss that are really representative. But uh, we need to understand that when we talk about the seismic, we have two types of seismic events. One of them is the, the one that uh, uh, had Lorca in Spain, quite near Murcia, and the L'Aquila in Italy, that are nearby earthquakes, interplates. This means that, uh, in fact, the, the movement of the soil is more vertical than horizontal and affects not a wide area, but uh, just uh, a concentrated area. And uh, the effects of this seismic in, the, in all of the structures uh, it is not exactly the same as the other type of earthquakes that we have uh, in Japan or Indonesia um, that are far apart uh, of the places and uh, will affect a wider area and uh, the horizontal movements will be stronger. In fact, we have uh, different types of magnitude uh, in relation to these nearby uh, uh, earthquakes, we have, uh, in this case, uh, 5.1, 6.3, uh, but in the other case, we have 9. That uh, is almost uh, uh, at the upper part of the, the strongest earthquakes. In fact, imagine uh, that uh, the difference between we have a magnitude of uh, uh, 6 for a magnitude of 7, is almost we have uh, three atomic bombs there. So, in fact, the, the, this can uh, strongly affect the structures and destroy a lot. We have already, uh, I, I, I will not say every year, but uh, <laughs> quite close, several earthquakes. And the, the, all of them had uh, specific characteristics. That is why we continued year after year to have losses and to have uh, problems with, with this, independently of the research and uh, all the technician, uh, technical uh, support that uh, we have. We have experience in real context, as in Turkey, as uh, uh, in uh, all, uh, uh, all urban area, and uh, despite all the regulations that we have now, uh, we repeat the same errors, even in uh, many other countries that have similar regulations for uh, seismic. So in many cases, one of the, the ways that uh, uh, the researchers are trying to uh, to suggest is uh, to use the insurance to, uh, uh, to oblige uh, uh, the use of uh, uh, some methods in the construction and uh, also some of the techniques and not having this kind of errors. In, uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, old uh, buildings that were not built with uh, according any uh, seismic regulation. So, in fact, we have here uh, quite different um, uh, characteristics that can affect the, the, the structures. Imagine this one in Lorca, just an example, in a building that has a, 
a part of, uh, of that in underground, but with uh, uh, a small column uh, right here, and uh, just a narrow in this column affect the entire building and happens this, just one. This means that uh, earthquakes will uh, um, find any vulnerability of the structures and the ev every vulnerability also uh, of, the, the, of the soil. And uh, in uh, a few seconds, we have, uh, we have the building and the other second we don't have the building and uh, we have human losses also. So what to do? We can wait uh, or we can do something. We will not uh, control earthquakes, uh, but we need to understand that earthquakes don't kill people. What kill people is the buildings are the, uh, the structures. We also need to, to understand that the lessons from the past with the, uh, the earthquakes and uh, what's happening there. Uh, the example of uh, uh, this Lisbon earthquake uh, in the 18th century was uh, uh, really interesting because uh, they, when tried to rebuild Lisbon, um, they tried to understand what was the cause of collapse of the buildings that they had there. So they had the, the perception of uh, what really matters in, in that case, and they propose a new uh, type of construction with timber that is uh, 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 that function with all the things connected, as the walls, as the the the, uh, the timber floors, the the, uh, the structure of timber floors, and the uh, of, and of the roof. So everything can uh, move at the same, with the same uh, uh, kind of movement and not have uh, uh, anything that is not uh, connected. So uh, nowadays, and a few years uh, ago, several um, researchers tried to understand exactly this and made some tests uh, at the lab. In fact, we also have, uh, at least in Portugal, and uh, uh, I can uh, uh, um, imagine that in many other countries, that uh, traditional construction also had some uh, strategies to control the, the earthquakes, like uh, in uh, churches, the buttress, or the use of ties, or the keystones, uh, or, or other elements. But we need every time, and we do that uh, at the University of Aveiro, when, uh, happens an earthquake um, in Italy or in another place, we go there. And we go there to learn, to learn to see what happened with, with, with the buildings, what happened with the, the structure, what happened with the soil, and we record and try to understand the reasons. Uh, just because if we understand the reasons, and we cannot, in fact, predict uh, an earthquake event, so we need to be prepared. So what's happening when we talk about the underground structures? Well, in fact, there is no much experience uh, in underground structures in, uh, with this relation uh, of uh, seismic. So um, it is uh, uh, an experience that we uh, saw more in relation to uh, tunnels and uh, with the uh, structures that we build nowadays. Um, and in fact, what we see that is that uh, both structures that uh, directly uh, are affected by the vibration of the, 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 the sign, but the buildings that are upper, the, are not underground, are upper, will have a dynamic amplification of this movement and uh, they collapse or not collapse according with the characteristics of the structures and the, also the, the type of connections uh, of the, those structures. On the contrary, we have the underground structures that uh, because they are surrounded by the, the soil and um, if the soil is uh, more or less uniform, the, the structures will deform accordingly with the movement of the, of the soil. 
So, uh, in fact, uh, the type of deformation we, we can more or less predict. But this is in the case of deformation of new structures and not the ones that the most of the cases that we had in, in these last years, uh, uh, they, um, they are uh, natural. They were uh, uh, natural uh, caves or uh, not, uh, uh, don't have reinforced concrete, the most of them don't have other elements. Uh, that we can measure uh, with uh, uh, well, with all the, the details that we need. So uh, we can uh, understand that the the main problem uh, is when I have the the, the structure. Uh, if it is quite deep, the, this uh, this cave or this uh, underground uh, uh, structure. Uh, probably I will I will not have many problems, uh, but I need a lot to to understand the underground ge geology, the characteristics of that, and uh, understand exactly how deep is my structure to avoid the because the main problem is uh, is the the. Um, how many meters I have from my structure, underground structures, to the ground soil. And uh, in some cases, uh, I, uh, I visit uh, uh, last month uh, one, uh, one case in Azores, Iceland, uh, that has also um, a seismic event. And uh, the problem was, they had two, two problems in a cave. Imagine that one of them uh, was not an earthquake, but was uh, uh, the, um, when an uh, uh, infrastructure of a uh, highway road, they put uh, just uh, uh, the, the cave was just uh, three meters in a, uh, in a small part, just three meters until the ground. And uh, when uh, they use explosives uh, there to, uh, to do the, the infrastructures, they damage the, the, the rock uh, that was in the surroundings of the, this cave. And because of that, the the water of the rain and the water also the, uh, of uh, small uh, rivers uh, enter, and uh, uh, there was um, a collapse, a partial collapse of the cave. And this is one problem. I, um, as an architect, my concerns when I um, I see this type of uh, of structures is all the times the part of the structure that uh, is close to the ground soil, and uh, exactly uh, uh, if uh, the characterization of uh, the geology of this just to understand if I have a uniform rock, uh, so uh, the civil engineers, the structural engineers can. Um, uh, you know, modeling and see exactly what will happen. Otherwise, if we have uh, discontinuities or if we have uh, other types of uh, not uniform, we will not uh, have also uniform behavior. So we have also to to take uh, in a, in attention in rela in relation to uh, to that. So, uh, in fact, the most of the the, um, the problems uh, can be also uh, related with the, the geologists, but uh, we need to also to understand uh, where are the the seismic faults, and uh, at least to try to not build anything, or try to not use uh, in that in that areas imagine in this case uh, the, in uh, in china we have a school and the uh, the problem was when uh, uh, the earthquakes uh, start uh, the tectonic plates uh, they move and they could move a lot and uh, when they move in this case the one of the buildings 
uh, get upper three meters in relation to the to the ground soil or original level of the ground soil. So you you can imagine the the load that is necessary to and the movements uh, of the soil that is necessary to to happen this. And the, the other problem that we have in the underground and also uh, in relation to, to other uh, type of construction is a uh, liquefaction. Uh, in fact, well, we don't expect it to have liquefaction in, uh, uh, at least in these underground structures, uh, uh, heritage, because uh, we, uh, we saw that in the most of the cases, uh, the, the geology is, is a rock and uh, is not exactly the, this type of problems. But in fact, this can affect uh, a wide area and uh, for that reason affect also the, uh, the underground. Liquefaction is a phenomenon that uh, uh, change during the, the earthquakes will change the, 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 uh, the strength and stiffness of the soil and uh, in fact reduce uh, uh, the compression and the, all the, uh, the, the links of the materials of the soil. So we will have, uh, um, imagine, uh, uh, we can have, uh, see the movement of the soil, but we also can uh, see uh, uh, similar with silt uh, happening and uh, cover everything. So it is a big problem because uh, it, it is really difficult also to, to control and to, uh, to avoid. And what's happening in a, a lake faction is like this. We can see buildings that uh, uh, almost disappearing. We can see highways that uh, uh, strongly damage or we can see, imagine, fractures uh, uh, along uh, uh, an area. In fact, well, we need to, to be careful where we park the car because in an earthquake event, uh, well, maybe uh, the, the place is not uh, so good. Uh, and the, but uh, the other problem that we have is, and we need also to, to see, is if we have water nearby the, our, our cave and our, um, uh, uh, and, uh, our underground structure, because the, the, the way the, the water will move, and uh, if there is any uh, uh, crack or uh, failure in, the, in the, our rock, we need to understand that the water will not be quiet, that it will be moving and uh, strongly. So we will have also, or we can have also damage because, uh, uh, because of that. So we have opportunities for the future and technical development. Uh, in fact, we have, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Portugal, we have uh, several laboratory testings about the structures, discrete modeling, and uh, we have also in situ tests, namely with a uh, through Anibal Costa that is here. In, in place, we go to the, to the buildings, we uh, reinforce and we test again. Uh, also, we, we modeling the urban block, uh, the, we evaluate uh, the response of the earthquake in, in relation to uh, our heritage buildings, but the most of them are in fact above the soil. So, um, I put this uh, sentence just to, uh, from the International Conference of Un Urban Underground Space uh, uh, that uh, they said uh, in the Oriental Declaration, the 19th century was the century of the bridge, the 20th century was the century of the agorized buildings, and uh, the 21st century will be the century of underground space. So maybe we can uh, join efforts to, uh, to um, go uh, and uh, keep the, the tension in, in relation to the risks that we have in relation to seismic in the underground structures. Thank you very much. underground space, so we are in the right place, right? Yes. In the training school of underground for values. Thank you, Alice. Any comments for the floor, please? From the floor, please. Yeah. 
Good morning. Um, just a curiosity linked to my case studies in Ayanapa. Uh, our site is, um, as you saw, oh, okay. As you saw on Monday, our site is uh, uh, a cave chair, a, a cave, a natural cave, and then uh, they built also other structure that are connected with this cave. In this, so it's partially underground and uh, a normal building. In this case, how would you approach, or are there any study concerning uh, the seismic uh, concerns or risk uh, and what to do? Uh, not, of course, to uh, to foresee, the, but to prevent um, possible damages. Thank you. Well, the, the most of knowledge is related with subway stations uh, and um, also uh, what uh, we can see that is recorded and uh, analyzed it is uh, the effects of the earthquakes in these type of structures. But uh, all of, in relation to this, we know almost all because uh, we, we could modeling the new structure uh, and the the, the subway structure is quite regular. So in, in those cases that we have a part uh, that is, uh, we have our cave and uh, imagine we built an access to, to the, the transition part of uh, this is the most vulnerable uh, uh, and uh, should uh, uh, be carefully de designed it and controlled. It. And also all the, uh, the, the part that is connected with the, the, the ground soil. So uh, I suggest that uh, some um, uh, studies and some modeling of uh, all this part uh, should be done and uh, also geotechnical uh, uh, reports should be uh, also done. Uh, just to avoid for one hand, to learn and to, to know exactly what we are dealing with, but also to avoid any problems uh, in the future, because th this will be the, the areas most affected by the earthquakes. Thank you. Any other comment, please? Thank you, Alicia, for uh, the important uh, point on the earthquakes. Uh, normally, when we look at the underground heritage, we look at uh, structures, underground structures, that are there uh, since thousand years. They pass, and uh, normally, if they were in very, very risky area, they should have already collapsed. So normally, what we look at, if there are changes, and uh, I, how do you imagine if there are changes, for example, access, uh, new access or uh, new works or new infrastructures in the same cavities, and how we could influence also decision making, not changing because uh, you know it's stable. It's, it's there since thousand years. It's a part of a geological site, and also if it's a, let's say very high risk area, maybe it's more stable than overground. How, how can we influence with this kind of uh, approaches? Thank you. Well, uh, in fact, we need to, to, uh, to see if the place, if the cave is in a seismic area or not, because it is not uh, the same. Uh, the, the, and the, uh, usually, um, we have uh, lots of studies in relation to seismic areas, because uh, we are quite concerned. Uh, what happening until now? It, it was that uh, uh, all the things that happen at a urban scale above, uh, uh, the politicians uh, didn't care about what was underground, so they uh, uh, approved uh, several uh, constructions above without caring about what uh, was happening. And the problem is, in fact, that the, the uh, what uh, even because. If we dig or if we dismantle a part of the structure, if we uh, put in risk 
in terms of water uh, or in terms of new cracks, uh, we will affect the underground structures and consequently we will affect also the support that uh, the, the buildings uh, uh, will not have uh, or uh, could be in risk also. So one of the thing is uh, to um, put the politicians, the, 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 uh, the, the stakeholders and the, uh, well, the persons that have the decision to understand that they need to um, develop the city taking the same care as above and below. So all the structure, as a, uh, uh, all the area as a unique uh, area. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we need to have studies about the, the geology uh, and to understand where are the vulnerabilities in terms of uh, in geology uh, to avoid to have the access to the, the, these underground structures uh, from uh, that. Uh, it is better to have the access uh, when we have a more uniform type of rock and we don't have any additional vulnerabilities. So uh, uh, I, can, uh, I can say that uh, uh, this multidisciplinary task is uh, um, quite uh, um, sensitive uh, because of that, because the, the person needs to understand that uh, they are leading with uh, um, uh, high risk. Uh, even we say, well, the underground structures, uh, the most of the times, behave well in a seismic event and don't have many uh, collapse and so on. But in fact, we are seeing that uh, at the urban scale, they are, they are not paying sufficient attention to, to that. So I think we need to sensibilize the, them that uh, we need to think about in relation at the unique area and not one thing is underground and another thing is upper.